Imagine you as a boy now saying to your dad, oh, I want to be a ballet dancer. I want you to be the best you can be and have no regrets that you didn't do the best. Welcome, you're watching Visionaries Lounge. You know that saying, when life throws you lemons, you ought to make lemonade? Well, that is precisely what my guest this evening did. At the height of his career as a principal dancer, South Africa underwent some much-needed social political changes. But what it meant for him, unfortunately, was that his career was disrupted. A number of his peers either left the country or pursued other ventures, but Ian McDonald stayed and became one of the founders of Joburg Ballet. Ian, it's a huge pleasure to be with you this evening. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank Thank you so much for having me. Before we get to the, 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 the founding of Joburg Ballet, I wanted to talk about little Ian. Where were you born and raised? I haven't thought about that for a long time. I know, it's uh, hard to picture yes. you little because uh, you're so tall. Oh, you're a towering you, thank figure you, thank you. <laughs> as well. Yeah. Um, I was born and bred in Johannesburg. Mm. I am a true South African through and through. Uh, I'm so proud to be a South African and to be here. Mm. You know, growing up as a child, and, I, and I'm embarrassed to say this, I was never aware of any of the social issues that we were facing, really. I mean, and I know my, my friends and, and um, people that I was socializing with, we just carried on. It was never a big thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's embarrassing. And it's, it's actually, if I look back now, I'm actually quite annoyed the fact that we weren't questioning or asking or- Because you were very protected. Completely. You're very protected. And that, that's where I was gonna go with my, my childhood. I was so protected as a child. Mm -hmm. I had the most amazing parents. Um, who supported me in everything. Imagine you as a boy now saying to your dad in South Africa, oh, I want to be a ballet dancer. Yeah. Oh, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Oh the whole goodness. stigma, the connotation. And, and w at what age did you make that realization that I think this is what sure. I want to do? You know, my, as most male dancers, they go with their sister to the ballet class. Yeah. And I, was, I was also blessed to have uh, an amazing sister. Yeah. Um, we joke and about it now because she is completely uncoordinated <laughs> um the, the only dancing she does is uh, on the dance floor like and, like like that, and you still tell her sit down <laughs> exactly it's like oh, <laughs> don't do don't that don't do it, don't do it. Yeah. but um i went with her so she wanted oh. to do ballet as most little girls um do and mm -hmm. i was watching this and i thought oh well, that looks like fun and and i got up and i did a few things and the teacher turned around and said to my mom well maybe he should come and do some good. lessons you know, come yeah. come along and join in so i went along for a few lessons and hated it i thought she was the most horrible woman i'd you ever met kidding. she was screaming and shouting and this wasn't fun and i was surrounded by all these little girls who were like, giggling in the corner and there i was this little boy skinny and standing there and not, not knowing whether this is really where i want to be so i said i went home and i said to mom that's it i'm not going back this, this is done i'm not this is not for me so <laughs> i carried on went to primary school and then like most primary schools you do that year-end concert yes. and they were putting a performance of um the wizard of the wizard of oz so um, the, t the music teacher said, okay, well, we have to have auditions. Um, let me see if anyone of you can, can dance a bit because mm -hmm. you want to have a little, little dance number. So we didn't really have a choice. Um, all the boys had to get up and do it, and we had to do this little, little number that they showed us. Yeah. And I thought it was quite fun, so I just went along and did it. And afterwards, the music teacher said her daughter is a, a ballet teacher, and she really thinks that I should come for, for lessons. So this was a, a number of years. So I was nine now at the, yes, at the yes. time, um, and went along. And we started rehearsing what we were doing in the show in the ballet classes. And that then evolved. I thought, oh, this is quite fun. It's actually. not as bad as it was initially. Exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. So let me, let me try. And she said, well, why don't you come to this class, which is happening at this time on this day? Mm -hmm. um, and I started learning the exam work, the, the mm -hmm. methodology. Um, and I thought, wow, this is actually quite hard. Um, and you had to do certain things like, I don't know, lift your leg up and then take it out to the front and hold it there for eight counts, close. Lift it up, take it out to the side, hold it eight for the counts. And I mean, the first time I did it, I was terrible. I couldn't hold it there. And I thought, wow, <laughs> it takes quite a lot of strength. It's a skill. Yeah, it's a skill. Yeah. And for me, it was almost proving to myself that I could do it. It wasn't about ballet. It wasn't about the, the fact that I was doing a sissy thing mm. or it was just like I want to prove to myself damn it that I can do this yeah. and I think that determination is something that's always stood by me you know if you set your mind to something and you're passionate about it and you want to do it 
you've got to put in the work and you've, yeah. got to, and you've got to suffer the pain that you're going to go through it. But if you, if you believe result, in it, yeah. you're going to see the result. So w when, I, when I got into high school, because I was actually going to go to Park Town Boys, yeah. that was my, my choice of, of high school, um, my teacher said to me, why don't you go to the art school, the National yes, School of yes, the Arts, yes. audition? And I never even thought about it. Uh, the funny thing with, with my career and, and myself was I never chose to be a dancer. It was never mm. something I consciously mm. ever thought, wow, this is what I want to do. Um, so she said to me, why don't you go along for the audition? They're having, having the audition, so from standard six, mm -hmm. what we call a standard six, so is that grade, grade eight? eight? Yes. Grade eight, yes. yes. So <laughs> let's give you my age away now. <laughs> so that was standard six, why don't you go? And I said to my mom and dad, what do you think? Mm. They said, the choice is up to you. If this is something you feel like you would like to do, oh, wow. go We're ahead. With you. Yeah. So I said to them, I'm going to go for the audition, and if I get in, great. If I don't, well, then it's that's, okay. yeah. I'll, well, I'll go to Parktown Boys. So I went along to the audition, and obviously, I mean, being a guy, it's not highly um, uh, something that you see often, yes. a, a male dancer. So I think they, they saw me arriving at the audition and said, before I'd done anything, yes, yes. he's in. <laughs> I mean, there's no male dancer. Yes. So. But we, we went through the uh, audition process and obviously got into the, the National School of the Arts mm. um, and went along and started from Santa Six and I eventually matriculated. And it was during that time that I really got to understand and appreciate what this amazing art form is. Talking about the tip of the iceberg, speak to me about PACT and, and, and how that opened up sure. a whole new world sure, for you. Sure. There again, I got to matric. W what am I going to do? I, I mean, it's, it's really sounds naive, but I had no idea what, what I wanted to do. I knew that I didn't want to do something that sat in an office and because yeah. uh, I was very physical, good at sport, this art form where you're in the, in the studio rehearsing and practicing 24 seven, because we used to obviously do it um, d during school hours because we were at the National School of the Arts and then after hours you had to go and do it again. So you, you got to learn about discipline and focus from an early age as well. Quite demanding. Quite demanding. Um, I'm going to be careful how I say this. I hated school mm -hmm. in that I was the worst academic student you have ever come across. Oh I, mean, I don't even know. Goodness. I don't even know how I passed <laughs> matric. So I got to matric, and the choice was: Do you want to go and audition for the company? Mm -hmm. um, the choice is is yours. The, there are a number of dancers that were going across to audition. I've got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. If I get in, I will. I will go to Pact and, and try. So um, got into the audition. And it was so nice to see other male dancers yes, and being yes, surrounded yes. by guys. And wow, look at them. Look how amazing they are. They are fantastic. Um, and as you know, I got accepted into the company. And I literally went from, from high school straight into a professional ballet company. Wow. Um, anyone that speaks to me and my yeah. daughter wants to dance or my son wants to dance, yeah. I'm the first person to say if they have that passion and they want to do it, they have to pursue Let it. Do it yeah. Because I've seen so many of my colleagues that yeah. their fathers said to him, and my wife. And um, make you choose. Make, make you, you choose. choose. And say, this is not a, 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 a real job. You yeah. have to go yeah. and, and have a real job. My wife um, wants you to come and join from Standard 6 as well. Mm. And, and um, my father and I now turned around and said to her at the time, mm. Absolutely not. You have to get oh a proper education. You're not, you're not. So standard six, we all went in at standard six and Karen yeah. went to um, Florida Park yeah. um, and hated, hated the school um, <laughs> just because she wanted to be dancing and she wanted to be with us. Oh no. And then came across in standard seven and they re-auditioned and she got yeah. in and eventually I think her father knew that every year yeah, it's gonna she's going to come back. So just battle, go, so just give in. Give in. And you know what, Ian? I, I, I want to discuss your rise then and how you became a principal dancer and and also the highs and the lows in just a short while so do stay with us for more on the life and times of ian mcdonald stay with us Again, and thank you once again for joining us. Tonight we're joined by legendary dancer and co-founder of Joburg Ballet, Ian McDonald. Ian, just before the break, you spoke to us about really how ballet chose you and mm. you didn't so much choose ballet. Let's speak about some of the successes that you enjoyed. I believe at some stage you were uh, the principal dancer at uh, Pact. 
Absolutely. So um, what happens within a company, you join at the base, which is normally an aspirant or a graduate year. So that is your, your learning on how the company works. So you don't actually have an official um, contract with the company yet. So that's, that is your baseline. And then you go into the corps de ballet, which is the masses of the people. Then within, our, within Pact, it was senior core, soloist, senior soloist, and a principal. So you've got to work your way through those, those different levels. And Pact was a company that had been around for a number of years with iconic dancers that had gone from packed into other companies and really uh, made a huge name for themselves. And the talent within the company was quite, quite phenomenal. At the height of your career, mm. experience mm -mm. some changes in South Africa. Absolutely. I believe PECT was, was, gov or was funded at least by Absolutely. the previous government, Absolutely. the apartheid government in yes. South Africa. 100%. And then the, the country goes through democracy, which mm -hmm. was very necessary. Absolutely. But what it meant for you in, in, in your professional capacity was that mm. PECT was no longer funded by the government. Sure. And that was a great disruption, I think, in, in your career. Absolutely. But it's, it's a lesson in life, and, I, and I've mm. never, ever stopped. You don't, don't feel sorry for yourself. S certain things happen for a reason. There's a, a bigger picture. There's a greater plan. Um, it's about choices. Mm. I can you feel sorry for myself. Oh, I don't, I'm out of work, and what are we going to mm. do? And blunk, 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 blunk. And yeah. OK, well, that's it. I'm stopping. I'm going to go do something. No, no. You, you, there's choices. Like, mm. well, we face with the situation. What are we going to do? Mm. This is an amazing time to, I've, I've never done a lot of corporate work. Mm. So I'm unemployed. We've got bills to pay. Um, you've got living expenses. Mm. I can't rely on mom and dad to pay. Embrace so this change. Embrace this change. Yeah. And you're so right. The change was needed. It was. Mm. Um, and. I'm extremely grateful for those changes in hindsight of because I would never have been in the situation I am now as artistic director of an amazing company. Take me back to yeah. that day, that meeting, when you were told Absolutely. that Pact is closing down. It was an incredibly emotional time because uh, the thought did go through my mind. So we were called in, all of us, um, and uh, Pact wasn't just ballet. It was the contemporary company, it was drama, it was opera, it was music, full orchestra. We, we were surrounded by a hub of creative artists. Um, and we went into the into the auditorium of the state state theatre, the opera yes. opera stage, um, and w we thought at the time it was just the ballet department being called in. Well, next thing it was technical staff, it was our wardrobe. You knew oh, this was hi, guys, serious. Yeah. What yeah, was happening? Knew. And uh, there was a microphone, and um, wow, something serious is going down. Yeah. And um, the CEO walked onto stage and he turned around and said, you know, unfortunately, because of the lack of, of funding and mm. situation we find ourselves in, um, we are going to have to close down, um, which is to tell you that you are all going to be retrenched and there mm. is no longer work for any of the, the artists within the, the building. Mm. Um, and you hear the silence we just heard now? That was the silence I heard. And then suddenly, one chair hit the back because when you, s in the theater, if you sit down and you stand up, the, 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 the chair the, the falls the back, yes, it's back. And I heard, doof. Doof, 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 and it got faster and faster and more people in silence. No one was saying anything to anyone. Just got up and, and walked out. Yes. Not to mention the fact that you were about to get married. So there was that whole drama. And there's a budget the that you'd uh, expect and all of a sudden exactly, you're going to be unemployed exactly, soon. Exactly, exactly. Yes. So, wow. And, I, and I th if I think as a parent now myself, if my daughter came to me and said, oh, we're unemployed, um, but we're getting married in six months' time. Yeah. Uh, no, you're not getting married because there is no money. And what are you doing for a job? How are you going to subsidize yourself? Because once you're married, you can't live at home. Mm -hmm. You have to go and support yourself. So as I said, I was, we, Karen and I, were surrounded by incredibly supportive uh, yeah. parents and family who were really behind us no, no matter what the decision was. And we, we were really blessed for that. So if I, if I look back at our wedding, and we went ahead and people were amazing at giving us gifts. Yeah. Um, I've, got, I've got a great, great friend, um, John Hockey, who is a designer. He said, I'll, I'll do your flowers for you. So people chipped um, in and helped. Completely. But I, I think, you know, turbulent situations like that sort of force you to A, grow, completely. B, discover that which lies within you that you don't even know 100%, yourself 100%. because out of those growing pains i suppose yep. then came the joburg ballet yep. and and you had to learn the business of, of 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 the arts industry you have to now start a company so you can't just be a, a creative and dancing around etc you had to be a businessman Absolutely. how was it born uh, or just going on, on your previous point, um, discovering stuff within yourself when, mm. you know, adversity, but also discovering who your true friends are oh, wow. and, and who supports you through thick and thin. Because it's all great when you're at the top of your career and you're in the spotlight and everyone wants yeah. to be surrounded by you and say, oh, I know. But who are those people when the situation is bad? Oh, wow. I don't have money. I don't have a job. I can't help you in any way. We'll support you. And those are your true friends. And those are the people that you need to hang on to. Wow. And that, that was also an eye opener for me to say, wow. 
I have nothing to give in return, but you're still willing to support oh, me. Wow. And that's, that's amazing. So, yes. So coming back to now, we are having to run a business. Um, I knew nothing about protocol of how to run a I didn't even know we had to have board meetings. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, great. So well, let's 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 do this production. Well, how are we going to? Yeah. We have to put a proposal together. How, Funding. How, exactly. Yeah. So that was all. So we actually sat in a room. There were six of us, the founder members of Joba Ballet. So mm. um, we literally allocated jobs to to our strengths. We had to get a board together. And in fact, one of the the, the founder members, yeah. so um, Andy Hancock. Um, was a, a, a great ballet to main of the companies and used to come watch all the performances. Yeah. We had actually invited her to our wedding. Yeah. Um, Mike Dove, who was um, a professor at um, at one of the uh, varsities, yeah. um, he also was an avid opera fan and ballet supporter, and wow. he came forward. Um, Don McRoberts, who is a, a well-known lawyer, yeah. he was also a great supporter of the ballet. So those were the, our three uh, mentors within yeah. the... Um, understanding how to run a business yeah. and, and how many years has it been now 15 years later, 15 years later. and they say the rest is history well, mm, but yes. it hasn't <laughs> been without its fair share of challenges we'll yeah. talk about the ebb and flow of Joburg Ballet and also what the future has in store for Ian do stay with us good to be with you. Ian McDonald joins us tonight. He's the co-founder of Joburg Ballet. Ian, you know, ballet is often seen as such an elitist kind mm. of activity. Mm. What are you doing, not only on a personal level, but also as Joburg Ballet, to open it up to the majority of South Africans? Completely. It's, oh, you know, changing perception, I think, is one of the hardest, hardest things to do. Mm. It's like a correction. I can tell you, you can't, you've got to put your shoulder back in a sit. Put your... It's about doing it repeating again, and repeating and, and again, again and again and again. And again. Yeah. But it will always be that thing that comes back. It's the same as the perception of what ballet is. Mm. We are doing everything in our power. It's not, and uh, I'm just going to say it, mm. it's not just for the white people. Yes. I can't, you cannot believe the talent we have in, in our, our, our townships. We go into, and I, I even, as I say township, it's underprivileged. I don't yeah. know, it's just I feel, I even want to move away from yeah. that. Politically correct. Yes, 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 like yes. Here are these beautiful stunning talented children who have never had the opportunity to be exposed to ballet you, you're very you know, passionate about it but but what, what do you make sure. of the current uh, situation in south africa especially when it comes to Completely. ballet Completely. and and the classics where do you think I'm we so are i'm so excited at the to say to you that i have so many parents walking in the street that yeah. know that i, I w I want my daughter to learn ballet. I want wow. my son to come and do classes. The phone is ringing off the hook about mm. lessons and how can I get, so I want to say transformation is happening. Mm. It is so happening and I'm so excited about that because I want our company to have 90% of black dancers and who are, and this, I was in the meeting the other day and they, they said to me, you know, transformation is happening but it's slow within the yes, company. Yeah. And I said, I agree with you 100%. Can I tell you why? Because it's not about color. It's about whether you can do it or not. I don't care whether you're pink, blue, orange, black, white. You can yeah. either do it and you can do it well mm. or you're not getting into the company. Yeah. Period. So if, if I have a company one day of 70% of them are, are black dancers and 30% white. It would be because of merit. They deserve to be exactly. there. Exactly. It's not because you're there, oh, shame, because we feel sorry for you. And yeah. No, it's not about window dressing. It's yeah. about because you can do it. Because at the end of the day, when an audience is watching, if whoever is sitting on the floor because they're not coping, the audience is going to know. But, but let's speak to you now about the difficulties of being a dancer. Mm. You know, th the good side is that it teaches you a lot, discipline, yes. character, yes. tenacity, etc. But it can be very harsh as well on someone's self-esteem. And you and Absolutely. I were talking about how, you know, we don't like to take photos a lot because you just th think you're not good enough then mm -hmm. or you, you, you're mm -hmm. striving for better and maybe when you're better, then you'll take photos, etc. Sure, but sure. In, in a personal level, what does it do for you? Well, 
as you said, we were talking about it, and, and as a dancer, you're standing and looking in the mirror and saying, wow, that's really bad, and that's not good enough, and that leg is so low, and it could be better, and then you have the teacher saying, it's not good enough, it should be higher, it's yeah. not, you know, so there's this boof, boof, boof. Um, but having said that, um, and if I look back, and I, and I, and I use it to, as a self analogy as well, it's not because they, they're breaking you down, it's because they're wanting you to be the best you can be. And I look at myself, because I can be quite harsh, as I said to you, when I'm taking rehearsals or I'm working with, with, with the, the dancers, I'm always pushing them to, no, it's not good enough. This is, you need to turn it little because I want you to be the best you can be and have no regrets that you didn't do wow. the best of, yeah. of what you can. And the, the talent is there. And, but for me personally, um, I've also had to say, you know what, it's okay to fail mm. because uh, you know, you look at yourself and think, it's not good enough. Okay, well, it doesn't mean I'm a bad person yeah. or that you're bad at what you do. It just means I've got to work a little bit harder on the weak areas because I've got incredible strengths. And, and I think we, and it's not just dancers, I think we as people can mm. be quite destructive to ourselves saying, oh, you didn't, you didn't do well here, you didn't, you didn't achieve yeah. this, you haven't done this, I'm now 40 odd and what do I have to show for it? Yeah. Who am I as a person? So it's about reflecting on yourself and also saying, it's okay to, to not yeah. succeed in some areas, but look at the positive side and focus on that and say, wow, but I have done this and I'm really good at that and I can do this. I look at you and I see a lot of passion, a lot of drive, <laughs> a lot of zeal, a lot of energy, <laughs> which is a great thing. But I want to know how you're going to use all of that going forward. What does the future have in store for Ian? I'm so excited. And for me personally, I'm so blessed to be in the position that I am making choices for the company yeah. because I'm, I'm excited to know that there's so much talent within this country. Uh, we are extremely blessed to have the Joburg City funding Joburg Ballet right now um, because I think they understand as the city see the value in what this art form can bring and they're seeing the changes within our youth that we're working with. But Joburg Ballet is an incredibly um, good place. Um, I'm wanting a lot more of international flavors to come and work mm. with the company. I want transformation to happen. I want more dancers to be employed. Mm. I want this company to be something that Joburg City and South Africa can be incredibly proud of. And we can go and represent our country out there by knowing we can hold our own with all these amazing companies that are oh. around the world. Ian, I feel like you've come full circle from a great deal of uncertainty. Yeah. You've reached high highs, low lows, but now you seem set on, on the right direction for the Joburg company. And your vigor almost makes me want to put on a tutu <laughs> And so I love it. I love <laughs> it. Ballet. Maybe yeah. we'll have plus size oh, ballet. Yeah. I do an <laughs> adult class for people that want to dance. So there you go. There's a, 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 oh, a, a channel for you. So to there is there. hope for me. Yeah, absolutely. Ian absolutely. McDonald has been a huge pleasure. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you. And I know I'm just imagining you at home are probably also doing like a little bit of a hop skip dance <laughs> after this. You'll have to uh, share with us exactly how you feel as a result of such conversations. I trust you are just as inspired as I am. See you again next week. Have a good evening. God bless. My parting message to anyone out there tonight watching is to say, just believe in yourself. If you have passion and a desire and you feel like you've got something to give, give it. Don't hold back because you can make a, a difference in people's lives. As I was growing up, I never realized the impact that I could have on people's lives by believing in myself. So if you have a passion and a desire, you can affect people's lives. Just follow your dream and don't give up. Whatever you do, keep striving um, and, and you can be a better person all around. Um, thank you so much for watching and good night. God bless.